John Hancock Biography John Hancock was an 18th century U.S. merchant who was president of the Continental Congress and the first person to sign the Declaration of Independence. Synopsis Born on January 23, 1737, in Braintree, present-day city of Quincy, Massachusetts, John Hancock inherited a thriving trading business in Boston and would, with Samuel Adams, become a major figure in colonial agitation against British rule. He was the first to sign the Declaration of Independence and would later be elected the first governor of Massachusetts. He also faced accusations of financial mismanagement. Early Life John Hancock was born on January 23, 1737, in Braintree, present-day city of Quincy, Massachusetts, to Mary Hawk and the senior John Hancock, who was a clergyman. The elder Hancock died when John was a child, and his mother took him and his siblings to live with in-laws in Lexington. She later sent John to live with Lydia and Thomas Hancock, his aunt and uncle. The couple had no children and hence adopted the boy. Thomas was a wealthy merchant who owned a highly successful shipping business. John went on to attend Harvard College, his father's alma mater, graduating in 1754 and subsequently working with his uncle. In 1759, John ventured to London and lived there for a spell, returning to the colonies in 1761. His uncle's health was failing and upon Thomas's death in 1764, John inherited the family business and estate. Unrest in the Colonies Hancock who reputedly maintained a lavish lifestyle and often faced staunch criticism for his exorbitance would become a major figure in the American Revolution. In the mid-1760s, he won two consecutive political positions, first managing affairs on a local level in Boston and then moving to the colonial legislature. He entered politics at a time when American colonialists were becoming increasingly agitated by British parliamentary tax regulations and restrictions, with Hancock becoming inextricably involved due to his importing-exporting affairs. Protesting financial regulations like the Stamp Act and Towns and Duties, Hancock commandeered public acts of protest. To avoid British taxation, Hancock had also allegedly taken to smuggling goods aboard his vessels. In 1768, Hancock's ship the Liberty was taken a hold of by British authorities who stated the merchant hadn't paid the required fees on his imports. Hancock was given a huge fine and taken to court. These actions in turn prompted mob violence on Boston streets and eventually led to British authorities sending in military forces. In 1770, after the Boston Massacre, where British troops fired into a crowd with no matching weaponry, Hancock chaired the committee that demanded the removal of British forces. After a period of improved transatlantic relations, Boston became a volatile site once again with the Tea Act of 1773, with Hancock helping to organize protests. He, along with fellow New England agitator and legislator Samuel Adams, was increasingly seen as a major rabble-rouser by the British government. Signs Declaration of Independence In 1774, Hancock was made leader of the Massachusetts delegate to the Second Continental Congress, which would convene the following year in Philadelphia. Yet Hancock and Adams were hunted by British General Thomas Gage. The two were warned by Paul Revere during his famous April 18, 1775 night ride shouting out that British forces were on their way. Hancock and Adams fled Lexington, where they were staying, and eventually made their way to Philadelphia. The Congress met in May, 1775. George Washington was appointed leader of the Continental Army while Hancock was appointed Congress President. Hancock would give the coming American war effort financial support while his presidential role was more of a figurehead position, with congressional decisions generally achieved through committee. In August of the same year, he wed Dorothy Quincy, who came from a merchant family as well. Hancock's business fortune by this time had significantly dwindled. Hancock became the first representative to sign the Declaration of Independence on July 4, 1776, a document which maintained that the 13 American states were free of British rule. Hancock left a sizable signature with Flourish, 
the idea of leaving one's John Hancock on paperwork has meaning to this day. John Hancock's Famous Signature In May 1775, John Hancock was elected President of the Continental Congress, which was meeting in Philadelphia. The next month, the Congress chose George Washington, 1732-1799, as Commander of the Continental Army. According to some accounts, Hancock had eyed the role for himself. During the eight years of war that followed, Hancock used his wealth and influence to help fund the army and revolutionary cause. On July 4, 1776, Congress adopted the Declaration of Independence, a document drafted by Thomas Jefferson, 1743-1826, stating that the 13 American colonies were free from British rule. The document also detailed the importance of individual rights and freedoms. As President of the Continental Congress, Hancock is credited as the first signer of the Declaration of Independence. His prominent, stylish signature became famous. According to legend, Hancock boldly inscribed his name so the English king would not need glasses to read it. Today, the term John Hancock is synonymous with signature. John Hancock's Governorship in Later Years After resigning as head of the Continental Congress in 1777, Hancock had his chance for military glory in 1778, when he led some 5,000 Massachusetts soldiers in an attempt to recapture Newport, Rhode Island, from the British. Although the mission was a failure, Hancock remained a popular figure. He went on to help frame the Massachusetts Constitution, adopted in 1780, and was elected governor of Massachusetts by a wide margin that same year. During his tenure as governor, Massachusetts was plagued by sharp inflation, and a number of farmers defaulted on loans and ended up in prison. In the face of the mounting political crisis, Hancock, who was suffering from gout, resigned the governorship in 1785. The following year, an armed uprising by Massachusetts farmers that later became known as Shays' Rebellion broke out. The rebellion ended in early 1787, and Hancock was re-elected governor that same year. He did not attend the 1787 Constitutional Convention in Philadelphia, however, he presided over his home state's 1788 convention to ratify the U.S. Constitution and gave a speech in favor of ratification. In 1789, Hancock was a candidate in the first U.S. presidential election, but received only four electoral votes out of a total 138 cast. George Washington garnered 69 votes, while John Adams, 1735-1826, captured 36 votes, earning the two men the presidency and vice presidency, respectively. Hancock remained governor of Massachusetts until his death at age 56 on October 8, 1793. Following an extravagant funeral, he was buried at Boston's Granary Burying Ground. Becomes Massachusetts Governor Hancock resigned as president of the Continental Congress in 1777, citing health issues, though he remained a member. During the same year he also faced accusations from Harvard for mismanagement of institutional funds, as he had been serving as treasurer since 1773, Hancock was made to issue a significant repayment. Then in 1778, working with the French Navy, he would lead an unsuccessful military campaign to recapture Newport, Rhode Island from the British. In 1780, Hancock won the election to become the first governor of Massachusetts. He held office until 1785 when he resigned, citing poor health once again. Yet his resignation also coincided with the forthcoming Shays' Rebellion, an uprising from debt-burdened citizens of the state who were protesting high government taxation and state regulations. Hancock was believed to have mishandled the Massachusetts economy, yet he was re-elected to the governorship in 1787. The following year Hancock also won the presidency of his state's convention, whose purpose was to ratify the U.S. Constitution. Hancock ultimately pushed for constitutional approval despite some initial reservations, and also presented amendments endorsed by the Federalist Party. 
Hancock's name was in the candidate pool during the first U.S. presidential election, though he won a small share of electoral votes.